All right, you are still watching Ways now for 75 years. United Nations peacekeepers um, have worked to save and change lives in the world's most fragile political and security situations since 1948. More than 2 million un um, uniformed and civilian personnel have helped countries to transition from um, war to peace. Now, working alongside local communities, um, peacekeepers help advise political solutions, sorry, advance political solutions, um, prevent conflict, protect citizens, strengthen human rights and rule of law and build sustainable um, peace. So it's International Day of United Nations Peacekeepers. These guys are very, very important. Yeah. They do a lot of work, you know, very, very quietly. Yeah. Nobody progressing knows. Progressing quietly, yeah. But they are progressing. Mm -hmm. I know so many people that have had to go take courses on conflict resolution and mm -hmm. all of that. Mm -hmm. Just, you know, quietly mitigating conflict in conflict remote, remote areas. Remote and areas. Yeah. So yeah, these absolutely. guys are very, you know, and we appreciate your work. And mm -hmm. we say that, you know, keep doing what you do. Um, there's nothing like peace. Absolutely nothing like peace. All right, so let me come to you, Norma. What did you find for us in the news today? All right. I guess the news will... There's no other news today than what is on ground. Tinubu makes history as the first former governor, senator to be president. So the news has it that the newly sworn in president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria became the first democratic, uh, a democratically elected president who formerly had occupied the position of a senator and governor in Lagos State. And um, this, is, this is coming as really interesting because now he has made history. He has occupied very significant positions in Nigeria. First of all, a senator, um, when uh, during the era before the military junta that he was forced to flee the country. And then when he returned in 1999 to Nigeria, he joined the Justice Forum political platform for the progressives, which made him become eventually a prominent member in the AD, Alliance for Democracy. And then he was supported by you know, various significant groups like Nadeko, Afenifere, and then eventually he emerged at the Lagos, as the Lagos State Governorship candidate under the Alliance for Democracy. And eventually, now, today, we witness in history, him becoming the first president who has occupied both the Senate the, as a senator and a governor of the of his state in the in the country. So we say congratulations to Bola Ahmed Tinubu, and uh, we're looking forward to Nigeria making progress. All right, so in the spirit of um, discussing Tinubu, I'll just quickly take my story, then I'll come to you, Diola. Okay. Um, the president has said, um, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu on Monday said that he would extend the courtesy worthy of a fellow compatriot um, to his opponents in the February 25th um, elections that brought him to power. He also argued that Nigeria has had, um, has had uh, not a better election than the recent one that, that was just concluded. And my victory does not render me more... Nigerian than the rest of you. It also does not render my opponents less Nigerian than me. I will treat my opponents, Peter Obi and Atiku Abubakar, as important compatriots. Tinubu said in his um, inaugural um, address again today at the Eagles. So we're going to talk a lot more about Tinubu, but you have um, oh, a yeah. rather sad news for us today. Oh, is that, uh, is that your story? Okay. No, okay, I thought that was your story. No. Okay. okay. So I think this is also, um, well, it's as big as um, the inauguration of the president today. Um, fuel subsidy is ah. gone. <laughs> president Tinubu declares in inaugural speech. I mean, um, the new president vowed to read Nigeria of terrorism and criminality. But I mean, part of um, the fuel subsidy, you know, going is um, he said um, the, um, the 2023 budget made no provision for fuel subsidy and more so subsidy payments is no longer justifiable. Hmm. So I guess, I mean, this has been a long time coming, and um, we've heard speculations about it in the last administration. Absolutely. And then, I mean, for him, I mean, to announce this, 
I mean, we've cast this bone. I can't wait for us to even <laughs> dive into the conversation yeah, because yeah, already yeah, I was yeah. going to the mainland today. Mm. There was no queue, nothing. I was coming back everywhere. Yeah, there's queue everywhere. They're already right panicking so, exactly, and all of that. The exactly. impact of all of these things. Yeah. You know? yeah. And yeah. some have argued that it's like the former president, uh, Muhammadu Buhari, kind of like set booby traps with a lot of things he was, you mm. know, either borrowing or, re or lending or, mm. you know, yeah. Uh, yeah. Whatever. so that, like, there were just so many things that they were doing almost like in a hurry mm. at the end of his few weeks in yeah. office and all yeah. of that. So it's almost like a booby trap for <laughs> the incoming president that sure. you're coming to come and face, you know. Yeah, and, but you I, know, Shatima, sorry to mm. cut you off, Shatima, that's the vice president, you know, he, I, I read something he said that, um, I mean, it's not like um, everything is going to be rosy in the mm. first um, couple of months of administration. Already, you know, it's almost like, okay, you know what, Nigerians don't expect some magic because it's <laughs> <laughs> all that to be. Okay. So, I mean, we're here for it all. We're here for it all. Right. I'm here with popcorn, waiting. <laughs> all right, so we'll take a break now, right? When we come back from that break, we want to just delve into this new era, the Tinubu Shetima era. What, what we feel the challenges will be and some of the, you know, expectations that we'll be having. We'll see you after the break. <laughs> 